Hey, hello everybody, I am Omni Rusted. Welcome to today's video. Now, before I started this video, I wanted to have a little bit of a disclaimer. This video is giving some advice, some tricks about the character and pawn traits that you're going to encounter, but these are mostly by my opinion and what I feel useful in the game. So yes, there are some spots where I will be giving advice uh, or some tricks on how to handle things, but if you disagree with how I use one of the traits or what I say about one of the traits, absolutely tell me in the comments. But remember, these are all my opinion. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Omni Rusted. Welcome back to my RimWorld tutorial series. Uh, today, we're going to have a little different thing that we're going to do where we're actually going to have a trait breakdown. Uh, we're going to talk about the traits in RimWorld, we're going to talk about how they affect, and maybe some tips and some tricks that you could actually get to make some of the more different traits work or some things you might not know about actual traits. We'll go straight through all the traits and then we're going to uh, actually talk about the tricks after that. And I've actually made up this handy dandy little guide here, which I'm going to be uploading a link down in the comments for, that you can check out whenever you're confused about a trait or whether you forget something about a trait. So we're gonna go one at a time through them. So first we start with nudist. Uh, nudist is basically, they just like being naked. Now if you go into the game itself and you go into the assignment section, let me just do that really quick. So if you go into the assignment section on your bar down here, you can see manage outfits. You can also say uh, current outfit and just switch them really quick to nudist. Nudist is specifically in the manage outfits screen. And it'll show you exactly what they're allowed to wear. The X mean they can't wear them. Now, uh, for nudists, they can wear shield belts, smoke pop belts, and any headgear. Uh, after that, they will wear literally no clothes in their uh, gear section for pants, for shirts, for jackets. Uh, basically, what you got to think about for nudists is you want to watch the temperature. And make sure that it's a comfortable temperature for them. If you're confused about the comfortable temperatures, you can see what their maximum comfortable temperature and their minimum comfortable temperature are right here. These will change depending on the clothes that they are wearing. And with the nudist trait, that will change everything else. So if you make them into a nudist, you basically got to think about it like that. Now, during the summer, during the winter, anything like that, if you want them to be wearing specific clothing, uh, say during the winter you don't want them to go because they keep getting frostbite, just change them back to the anything. They'll put on some clothing. They won't like it, but you know you, they'll get a negative mood let for constraining clothes in their needs section. But it's honestly good enough, and it's a short enough thing that uh, during the summer during the spring, it will give them a positive for being If naked. they're a commonly indoor job, such as doctor, researcher, crafter, or warden, then you can always have them naked all the time because those are your climate controlled areas and everything will be fine there and they can have that positive plus 20 because they're naked. Now, they will get negative social effects from everybody else who isn't a nudist. Occasionally, they might get insulted sometimes, but with the plus 20, it just means that they'll have uh, less of a chance of getting a lover. That's really it. They have a plus 20. You know, they don't care if they're, uh, if they're shacking up with somebody. They're naked. And they're free. Next, we go on to Bloodlust. Bloodlust is a really interesting thing. Whenever they hurt somebody, whenever they hurt anybody, whenever they're in combat, they get a positive, And this can stack. Uh, this means if they're a hunter, or they get into combat a lot, say if they're a raider, uh, stuff like that, then they will get positive stacking bonuses on their moodlets for it. It's a really, really interesting trait and one of my favorites. Another thing about it, though, uh, that it doesn't really talk about is they can butcher humans without the butchered human-like debuff. And they also get a positive moodlet for wearing human skin clothing. It doesn't really talk about that. That's something you got to find out for yourself in-game. But it's a really, really nice little thing. Uh, to basically give them a permanent mood buff is, you know, if you were looking for somebody to get into the human skin clothing trade, and this is where the game gets a little, a little odd, I'll admit, but if you want to get into the human skin clothing trade, 
Uh, everybody else will, anybody else who does not have bloodlust or also psychopath who butchers a human body will get a stacking negative moodlet for I butchered human like, and it can really, really screw up your entire colony. On the other hand, if say somebody with bloodlust or psychopath butchers human like, they get no negative at all. Everybody else in your colony does get a, 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 a one-time non-stacking negative six for we butchered human like but that's a negative six that doesn't stack and is easily easily manageable so if you want a cook or somebody that can butcher human like go for a bloodlust go for a psychopath those are the ones that can do it uh next on the list again i'm just going down the list that is on the wiki page for rimworld we have kind they get a social bonus to every social interaction uh basically this is one of the best people you can have constantly wandering around your colony because every single time they are hanging out socially which pawns do a lot they will get they will give everybody a random plus five to the, a, a very temporary but random plus five to their moods. Also, they get a bonus on a social interaction, say if they're trading, if they're talking to guests, if they're doing anything like that, if they're go if they're talking to prisoners trying to recruit them, uh, they give them a positive effect as well. Uh, next, we go into psychopath. Again, they're a great cook. They uh, they can butcher human like. They get a positive from wearing human skin clothes. Another thing about psychopaths, though, is they don't get the same kind of negative effects that other people would get for uh, for social interactions. They don't get a negative for uh, being insulted. They don't get a negative for, uh, for for having bad or good social interactions. And this can be it's it's a balance, but I honestly consider it a positive trade. You can see here I've uh, also uh, balance. I've also done this whole bar into, you know, desirable traits, whether they're desirable or not. Uh, I should probably should have explained that first. Uh, we got the trait name here. We've got whether it's a desirable trait, color-coded for your convenience. Uh, what you can do to balance it, or what the balance of this trait is, and then what jobs they're best at, and the notes on that as well. I should have explained that first. Anyway, um, so for Psychopath, they don't get uh, positive or negatives. From all of that, uh, they also are the best to, say, haul bodies around. They don't get negatives or positives from uh, the site of death or unburied colonists, things like that. Uh, they don't care about selling prisoners into slavery, stuff like that. Um, so the next we got Cannibal. Now, Cannibal is one of the interesting ones because you think that they would get the same kind of bonuses that Psychopath and Bloodlust would. You think that they would not care... Um, about butchering human-like. You don't think they'd care about stuff like that, uh, but in fact they do. If they butcher human-like, if Cannibal butcher, butchers human-like in a kitchen on a butchering table, uh, they will get the negative for that. But the thing is, is even if they're not a cook, they always get a positive, a random positive effect, uh, as you can see down here, um, from, they will just randomly walk into your kitchen, and they will randomly pick up some flesh, there's some human flesh that you got lying around as you do, eat it, and then get an enormous positive mood buff. It won't give anybody around them negatives, which is an interesting thing. They also get the same positives that Psychopath and Bloodlust do from wearing human clothing, uh, depending, of course, on the quality of it. But they are not allowed the same thing as Psychopath and Bloodlust to butcher human bodies. Next, we go on to abrasive. Abrasive can is one of the is one of the first negatives we got. It's a non-desirable. They will randomly insult people. It's it's not as bad as, for example, volatile or stuff like that. But it is still they will randomly insult people. You can balance it by give, for example, giving them a silent jaw implant or putting them on a, uh, a a schedule, such as a nighttime schedule, where they will not be interacting with other people if they're really, really good. But regularly, you want to avoid abrasive. Basically, every single social interaction they have with other people will have a negative more often than not. Next, we go on to Too Smart, which is the first uh, balanceable. So you got yes, you got no, and it uh, can be balanced. It's an in-between. Too smart is great because it has the same effects as fast learner. They will learn everything extremely, extremely fast, 75% faster. 
but they get a plus 12 to their mental break threshold, meaning that they will break more often. So it is amazing because they will learn every single skill they do 75% faster. You will need to give them good events or have some drugs on the side, smoke leaf or whatever, to make sure that when they look like they're about to break, they you can control that a little bit. So it requires a little bit more micromanage than fast learner, which is always good in every situation, but it's still really damn good. So too smart, same as fast learner, but needs a little bit more micromanaging. Next, we move on to super immune. They will gain 30% immune gain speed. If you see somebody with super immune, take them. Always. I mean, unless they got really, really negative traits like pyromaniac or, or stuff like that. Um, uh, what it means is just if they're sick, they get better faster. If they get infected, if they get plague, if they get whatever, they will get better faster. That's it. Simple. Awesome. Next, we go into Nimble, one of the first combat ones. Nimble is great. Nimble gives a plus 15% on every single hit to dodge, or plus 15. I don't know exactly how the combat works, but uh, it, it, it makes them better to dodge. It means also that they are only good when being swung at in melee combat. Now, if they have a gun and they are shooting at somebody, but that somebody comes near them enough that that person encounters them in melee combat, that means that they will also get the chance to dodge. It does not mean that they have that they only should be in melee combat, it just means dodging in melee combat. This combos really well with our next one, which is Brawler. Brawler can only equip melee weapons. If they equip something that is not a melee weapon, such as a gun, such as a bow, they will get a negative mood let, and you need to remember that. This partner is really great with Nimble. It does not require Nimble, but you want to make sure, much like Careful Shooting, which we'll get into later, that they have passion in melee in order to really make this effective. Um, because this person will only be doing melee combat. Period. End of story. You do not want them to fight Scythers. You do not want them to fight anything that is only melee, such as bears. But... If you got melee, outfit them with um, with a lot of bionics, outfit them with power armor, outfit them with a uranium or a plasteel mace, have them chase people down, have them be your warden. They will be amazing at that because they can knock people out, they can get you new prisoners. Next, we go on to Masochist, which also pairs really, really well with Nimble and Brawler. Well, maybe not Nimble, but pairs really well with Brawler. Basically, and this is an easy one, when they get hurt or when they are in a little bit of pain, they get a positive moodlet. It is really easy because it compare it pairs well with scars, which always give a little bit of pain. Also, if they're a brawler, brawlers are always getting into melee combat, and when you get into melee combat, you are going to get hurt nine times out of ten. So if they're in a little bit of pain, boom, they get a negative moodlet. It's a really easy thing. Plus, if they're about to break or if they are breaking, beat them up. Have somebody who has a gun, not any edged weapon. Now, this is a big, this is a big important thing when it comes to combat. If they have a knife, if they have a sword, don't put them in melee combat with your own colonists. They have a chance to kill them. There is always a chance to kill them when anybody gets into combat in any way. But if you have, say, a mace, a club, or uh, a, a gun, uh, fists, stuff like that, you will have a better chance of just knocking the person out. And in that case. Uh, capture them, which if it's your own colonists and they're in the middle of a break that you desperately want to stop, say they're 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 eating up all of your yayo, whatever. You want them to be beaten up. You want them to go down. You want them to stop whatever break they're having. You don't want them to butcher your animals, etc. Uh, Masochist is really good for that because it will give them a good moodlet after that. Uh, any amount of pain will give a masochist a good moodlet. Next, we go on to the Prostophile and Prostophobe. These are very, very interesting ones because they, they they also don't pair well together. So first off, we'll say if one colonist has Prostophile, another colonist has Prostophobe, they will insult each other. They will get into arguments over it, which can result in fistfights. If you have a Prostophile who has Bionics and then a Prostophobe sees them, they will insult them and try and get into a fight with them because of those Bionics. And that is something you need to remember, is they will get into fights constantly. I prefer getting a lot of Prostophiles, because late game, I tend to give almost every colonist that I have a lot of Bionics. Bionics just make everything better. Um, 
But if you have prostophobes very late game and you try and give them a bionic, they will have a permanent mood debuff as long as they have that bionic. Which is really bad if you get somebody who gets brain damage, and then you have to give them a uh, brain stimulator or a, a brain buddy, and then they will have a permanent mood debuff while they have that bionic, but otherwise they're brain damaged. It kind of doesn't make sense. And you can't get rid of any traits. Traits are always permanent, unless there's a mod or something you have to, that moves them around. Now, Prostophile, I've always found great. Early game, it's very hard to balance because they will have a permanent mood debuff, uh, a permanent negative mood let, while they don't have bionics. It used to be where you could balance that by just giving them a peg leg or a, an eye patch or something very early on and then replacing them with bionics later. I don't think that still works. I think that, uh, I think that got actually fixed out. But that's basically it. Is Prostophile a little difficult early game because you have to balance the fact that they're going to have that negative moodlet. Late game, really easy. Once they have any kind of bionics, no matter what it is, you can give them a bionic nose and they will be super happy. They will always get a positive moodlet from that. Prostophobe, exact opposite. Really easy to understand. Next, we got a green thumb. These are the best farmers. They get every single time somebody with green thumb plants a plant, they get a permit they get a stacking, sorry, a stacking positive moodlet every single time. It's one for every plant they plant, but it's really, really easy to balance green thumbs because of that. If you make, if you have a f somebody with farming skill and they are a green thumb, they're set for life. They will never, ever be unhappy. It's also really nice if you have somebody who has really great traits but doesn't have skill in farming. If you ever want them to be happy, just set them on farming for a little bit. They'll go, they'll play around with the plants, they'll come back with a very happy moodlet. Night Owl is a really difficult one to manage, I think, because no matter what, your nighttime hours aren't going to last as long as your pawn will stay awake. Uh, the best hours for Night Owls are hour 23 to hour 600 between there. So if you have a Night Owl, try and put them on something that somebody else is taking care of during the day. Uh, such as doctor or cook when you have somebody you want to stay awake such as a doctor who is taking care of sick people or somebody might get injured or sick or whatever you want to have somebody who can take care of that cook is nice because you can have constant meals and people can have breakfast waiting for them in the morning it is not recommended to start out with somebody who has a night owl because that means that you won't have them up at the same time it's also really tough because a night owl will be up at the same time as a lot of your negative interactions such as your abrasive your volatile your your staggeringly ugly people who you try and put at a nighttime schedule in order to avoid interacting with other people. The only people that they will be interacting with is the people who are awake at night. That can be good, that can be bad, depending on who you have awake at night. But, on the other hand, night owl make great people for nighttime docs or nighttime cooks, nighttime workers of any kind, really. You also have to balance the fact that if they go outside, such as they're a miner or a hunter, they're always going to be in the dark and they will still get the negative mood let for being in the dark. Next, we go on to Greedy and Jealous. These are interesting ones. Um, these don't pair well together, first off, but because both Greedy and Jealous need to have the best bedroom of their own. They do not go well in barracks. They can handle barracks for a little bit, but really, you should never have people sitting around in barracks or sharing rooms, unless they're lovers. Um, so, for Greedy, all they need is the best room. Once they have the best room, they're happy. For Jealous... It's a specific thing. Jealous needs to have the best room, and if they have, so if somebody else in your colony has the best room, they will start to get a rivalry with that person and will have negative social interactions. But if the other person doesn't isn't uh, greedy or jealous that they are jealous with, you can actually check the moodlet itself, and it will have the name of the person who has the best room. Give the jealous person that best room, and you've balanced it. But again, if you have several greedy or jealous people, you're going to have a lot of problems. Next, we go on to aesthetics. Honestly, I almost put this one at a positive, but it is one of those ones that you need to balance. They love ugly environments, and that is basically the balance of aesthetic. Really, really easy early on when you're going to have dirt and crap everywhere. But on the other hand, once you start to get to lots of clean rooms, once you get to start to lots of really good looking rooms, they can get really unhappy. They make amazing miners. They make amazing cooks. They make amazing miners because when they're mining at something, they have bricks everywhere. 
or chunks of rock everywhere. Those chunks are going to make the, the environment ugly. And because it makes the environment ugly, the aesthetic gets a moodlet, uh, a positive moodlet. Um, they make good cooks because there's always bodies and meat, which are negatives on the beauty factor. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the the beauty factor on RimWorld, uh, you can see what is a positive and what is a negative. Um, I will show you that tool in a later game or in a later video. So they also make good weavers because leathers and hides uh, give a negative uh, beauty effect. Same thing with hunters. When they're outside as hunters, there's dirt everywhere. There's blood everywhere. There's there's dead bodies all over the place. They make good hunters, but not as good as they make miners, cooks, or weavers. The cool thing about aesthetics that I love, you give them their own bedroom, and then you make a uh, a a a stockpile area in there for chunks. Chunks get pulled into their bedroom. They have an ugly bedroom. They get a positive mood light. Really, really easy to balance. Unless they get a lover that isn't aesthetic, in which case their lover will hate the bedroom. Anyway, on to gay. The most, uh, I would say, controversial thing in here, but it's... We're not going to talk about that. That's not what this video is for. Gay is a sex... A, a, a gender-based thing. They will only get into relationships with people who are also gay. That are of the same gender. Um, now, the bad thing about the gay uh, trait is that people who are who do not have the gay trait that are of the opposite gender will try and seduce them and will get the rebuffed status a lot. So you have a, a, a male who has the gay trait and a female who does not. The female will try and romance the male gay character and get the rebuffed status. And the gay character will also get the re uh, had to rebuff status. So it can be very negative. So it's really up to you whether you want to deal with it or not. Generally, it's a trait that I just ignore because it tends to balance itself out. Uh, misandrist and misogynist. These are some of those, like abrasive like creepy breathing like annoying voice those are the you probably want to put them on at nighttime and make sure they have no social interactions it can be balanced out with the silent jaw implant because that will prevent them from talking now you also gotta remember the silent jaw implant can be very useful however it will give them a negative debuff because they can't talk to anybody and they also can't get joy from social interactions on the other hand if you've got a misandrist or a misogynist they're always going to get negatives anyway because they're always getting into fights with people of the opposite gender. So they will have constant negative social interactions. Next, we go on to annoying voice. Kind of the same thing as misandrist and misogynist, but it's not just one gender and creepy breathing. Like, they will... Every every social interaction can can have a large, large chance. Not, not, per, not always negative, but will more than likely be negative. Creepy breathing is one of the ones that you cannot, no matter what you do, change. They will always have creepy breathing. There is no balance. You can't give them a silent jaw implant to fix it. They will have constant social, negative social interactions with everybody. People will insult them because of their creepy breathing. Next, we go into Pyromaniac. One of the first ones that I have specifically colored in so you know, avoid these. Pyromaniac. They will have random, uncontrollable mental breaks where they will lot, try and light everything around them on fire. These can last a couple hours to an entire day in game and they will light everything on fire. If the person is surrounded constantly by other people who are on firefighting, which they, everybody should be on firefighting constantly, then they will put the fires out, but you're still losing the use of that pawn for that whole day, and they can potentially severely damage, if not kill, if not destroy your entire colony. Next, we go on to Wimp. A lot of people consider Wimp a negative, a, a do not take trait. Honestly, I consider it that it does actually have its good points. Uh, with a pain stopper implant, you can balance that, but it won't block out all the pain. They will still go down to a single punch. They make, in my opinion, really good hunters. The reason they make good hunters is a lot of times when you're hunting, the animal will take revenge on you. And when they take revenge on you, the animal will attempt to attack you. While they're attacking you, your person will still continue to shoot at them. If this person is, say, you're on a large map, and your hunter is most of the way across the map away from your doctor, they could bleed out, they could get severely injured, they could get downed, it could take a while for your doctor to get to them. Say, 
your hunter is shooting a boar. That boar, and then all the boar, boars around them, decide to go manhunter. They decide to go revenge. They rip your person apart and drop them on the ground. They're not dead, but they're just on the ground bleeding out. Then, not only do you have to go rescue that person, first, however, you need to take out the boars that are now manhunter and coming for your entire colony. While you're fighting those boars, the hunter that got downed is bleeding out. And you still have to have your doctor go rescue that person and bring them back. And then patch them up and hope that you get to them in time. Wimp, on the other hand, the boar hits them once. For a light scratch. The wimp goes down. They're going to have much less of a chance of bleeding out, of serious injuries, and of infection while they're lying on the ground waiting to be rescued. Now, in combat, it can get very bad because, say, you're in combat and this person is just constantly going down. They take, like, oh, it's a little bitty scratch from a club. They're downed. That person is down useless in that combat. But as hunters, they can actually be very positive. Next, we go on to two of in my opinion, now, I do need to note, these are my opinions. I hate chemical fascination and I hate chemical interest. One of the things that I hate about any gameplay in any game is taking control away from the player. That's exactly what Pyromaniac, Chemical Fascination, and Chemical Interest do, which is why I consider these some of the worst traits in the, games, in the game and ones to, no matter what, avoid them. Your pawn will have random mental breaks to go use any drug that you have around. Now, this can use up your entire smoke leaf uh, thing. It can also have them get a random addictions. It can also have them get tolerances so that uh, they won't be able to, uh, you won't be able to control their mood as well with, say, smoke leaf. Um, it also means that if certain things are on the ground, like you kill a raider way, way in the distance, he had some yayo on him that you completely didn't know about. Uh, your person will randomly go on a mental break, run all the way across the map, say during a fire, during the nighttime, during a raid, during a siege, and they will run to go get that yayo, and you cannot stop them. They can also binge on things like wake up. Wake up! is a good drug, but no matter what, will give you a heart attack a year after you take it. So if they binge on that, they will take the 1 or 2 or 17 wake up that was somewhere on the map, and then a year later will have a heart attack, let alone the fact that they very, very commonly will give themselves an overdose. Do not take these. Teetotaler is one of those ones where if you have good traits that will give them happiness in some other way, such as uh, Optimist, such as uh, Green Thumb, stuff like that, you can control their moodlets in other ways. But Teetotaler means that they will refuse to take any drug of any kind. They, you can't give them beer, you can't give them smoke leaf. Also, if you try and improve their mood by giving them smoke leaf while they're, say, say they get a plague and they're really unhappy or they have cabin fever or they're they're just unhappy because they're sick or want to sleep with their lover and they're really unhappy because of it you want to give them smoke leaf to put them in a better mood nope nope they're a teetotaler you can give it to them but then they're going to be super unhappy they're going to get a negative moodlet instead of a positive moodlet because you had to give them drugs be very careful of that so if you have um i would say this is more of a balance but I always put it as a negative because it's one I try to avoid. If you can't, if you have those very few traits that can give them a positive moodlet all the time, sure, take them. Otherwise, I'd avoid it. Next, we go on to the ones that I'm always looking for, Industrious and Hard Worker. Industrious and Hard Worker are grand. Let's see what the bonuses on those are. Industrious is plus 35. Hard worker is plus 20. Now, this is work speed. And now, we need to point out what exactly counts as work speed and not work speed. For example, healing somebody up, patching somebody up, doing surgery as a doctor. Those count as work speed. Building, doing artistry, crafting, all speed. Butchering, cooking, those are work speed. Farming, technically work speed, but it's so fast that it doesn't really matter. Uh, hauling, cleaning, not work speed. Believe it or not, cra uh, cleaning is sort of work speed, but it's, again, like farming, so fast that it doesn't really matter what the work speed is. So for industrious and hard worker, I would really recommend great, they make great constructors, they make great miners. Um, mining is not a work speed thing. 
it's a kind of a gray area. It's not a work speed thing, but they do get a bonus from Industrious on the next time that they're going to strike the rock. So they do make good miners. Uh, on the other hand, Lazy and Slothful, this gives them a negative work speed, same way that hard, Industrious and hard work get positives, in, in the same vein of 20 and 35%. Now these can make great hunters, because now hunters, uh, shooting is not a work speed. Shooting is just as fast as they can shoot the gun. And that means that if you have somebody who is lazy or slothful, they could be a hunter. It's a balance there. But if you have them if you give them a non-work time job, like uh hauling, for example, or cleaning, something where the work speed doesn't really matter, they could still do those jobs. It also doesn't affect their movement speed, such as the next ones do. That's a good segue there. As jogger and fast walker, which give um Movement speed bonuses and slowpoke gives a movement speed negative. Uh, these are really, really great ones, and I always love giving them to, for example, melee characters, brawlers, nimble. If you're gonna have a melee character, having them with jogger or fast walker means they're gonna chase down enemies even faster. They're also great on haulers, cleaners, stuff like that, people who need to be moving really fast. Um, I say they're great with melee, but really, your doctors, you want doctors to be moving as fast as possible so they can go fetch medicine, so they can go rescue people. Constructors, so they can go get the materials to construct rooms with. Hunters, so they can, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, they're, they're all around good. Let's just say that. <laughs> we'll just say that. They are all around good traits. Um, Slowpoke. Uh, if you give them a non-distance traveling job where they're going to be sitting at one place for a very, very long time, or like a cook, materials are brought to them, like an artist where materials are brought to them, or the materials are very close to their workstation, Slowpoke is okay. They're not going to be moving very fast, so it doesn't really matter at what, their, what their walk speed is. If they're in combat, you don't want to have a Slowpoke in combat because everybody that you're moving around will be moving to the combat location, whereas your Slowpoke guy will be lagging behind everybody else and likely to be shot in that case. Next, we go into the just, just moods. Sanguine, Optimist, Pessimist, Depressive. Much like Industrious, Hard Worker, Lazy, and Slothful, these are permanent mood bonuses or permanent negative bonuses. And that's really it. I mean, I can't really explain much else about that. If you want to balance out the pessimist or depressive, you can attempt to get them a joy wire later. Or you can also try and balance them when you see that they are near a major break risk with drugs of some kind. Uh, but then again, for pessimist and depressive, unless they have a lot of stuff constantly making them happy, such as pretty, really pretty rooms, uh, extremely rich rooms, or a lover, they're gonna constantly be on a major break risk, and you're constantly gonna be giving them drugs. So make sure, before you get a pessimist or a depressive, that you can handle their negative moodlets. Next, we go on to Iron Willed and Steadfast. Now, I will occasionally, I'll admit, uh, balance an Iron Willed or a Steadfast with a pessimist or depressive because they get a permanent uh, break threshold uh, as well as uh, the the nervous and volatile uh, you can definitely balance these out um, and they can also balance out certain uh, mood effects such as butchering human-like or bad environments. Like if you have a miner who is constantly mining out places that are going to be really dirty. If you have a cleaner who is going to be constantly going into places that are really disgusting because they're really, really dirty. Those can balance out those negative moodlets. And that is something to always keep in mind. Um, if you have, say, somebody who is constantly getting insulted because they have an annoying voice. If they have steadfast or iron weld. Yeah, they get insulted a lot, but they'll be okay with it. Nervous and volatile, on the other hand, I would say nervous you can easily balance with joy, wire, and drugs. It almost never affects anything. Volatile, on the other hand, they're on a hair trigger and is likely to break at any tough situation. It's a plus 15. This actually had to be balanced from the negative 18 because it happens so often. You can give them a silent jaw implant and they will basically go into less social interactions, but they will still have absolutely random, violent mental breaks. And that is not something that it says in the description. If they go into a mental break, they are more likely to go berserk and attack people. They are more likely to go into a, a butchering break and kill all your animals. Uh, this is one that I definitely say to avoid. You can try and balance it with a jaw wire, and I say to you, best of luck. Now we go into ones that are really, these are the most maybe you can balance this kind of ones. Neurotic and very neurotic. Neurotic and very neurotic, 
they get a work speed bonus, which is incredible. A 40% work speed bonus, which is even better than hard worker or industrious. It's 5% higher than hard worker or industrious on both of those. The balance is that they have a higher mental break threshold, uh, meaning that they will be more likely to have that mental break, by the way. Uh, when it says negative here, that means they're less likely. When it says positive here, that means they're more likely to have that mental break. So yeah, they will have negative mood effects. Uh, they are more likely to go into a major breaker, so make sure no matter what, you can balance that with a joy wire. You can balance that with drugs. You can balance that with really pretty rooms that are going to make them happy. Make sure you can balance them. They are amazing because they have the fastest work speed in the game, but by everything, make sure you can balance the negative mood. Let's, otherwise, they're going to be breaking all the time. Now, the two ones that I love the most... Careful Shooter and Trigger Happy. These are only combat ones that are very, very interesting. Uh, careful Shooter means that their aiming time takes longer. They take much longer to aim, but they're going to be more accurate at the same time. These ones are great to give very uh, s uh, accurate slow weaponry to, such as sniper rifles, such as uh, missile launchers, such as uh, uh, putting them on your mortars such as hunting rifles, uh, the old-fashioned rifles, stuff that takes a long time to shoot, but you want to be really accurate because they do high damage. Trigger Happy is the exact opposite. You want to give Trigger Happy... Uh, th they have aiming time negative 50, so they'll be shooting way more often. So whatever gun you give them is also going to be less accurate, but if you give them an auto weapon, such as a minigun, such as an assault rifle, um, any... Uh, such as an LMG, inaccurate auto-fire weaponry, they will fire them way more often. So it's it's the balance between very, very accurate single fire, high damage, or inaccurate bullets everywhere. You just want bullets everywhere, put bullets into everything, don't expect them to be accurate, just expect a lot of bullets. So either one of those, really, really good with shooting skill. Uh, next we go into the uh, sort of... Uh, kind of very odd ones, I would think. I'm not... I mean, I could see why they're in the game. But they're also very controversial. Um, beautiful, pretty, and ugly, and staggering the ugly. Beautiful and pretty mean that every single social interaction they have... Well, not every single one, but most social interactions they have will more than likely be positive, whereas Ugly and Staggeringly Ugly will almost all the time have good ones. Now, for the Ugly and Staggeringly Ugly, you want to have these guys on your night times, on your non-social interaction jobs, on your non-social interaction schedule, uh, so you can put them on a nighttime schedule to avoid social insults, but they will constantly be insulted. Beautiful and pretty, uh, people will, they, they might have more rebuffs than normal, but if you, but they always have great one. Uh, they always make great wardens, traders, and caravan traders because more often than not, they will have positive interactions with these people and positive social interactions. Also, just to note, beautiful and pretty will be insulted by ugly and stagger staggeringly ugly, and vice versa. They will insult each other all the time. They will get in fights. Now, the last four here are. I put them in blue on the desirable because I couldn't really figure out exactly where to put them because it's all as to they're all situational and that's the thing. Psychically hypersensitive, duh, psychically sensitive, psychically dull, and psychically deaf. There's no balance for them. Well, there is a balance for them, and that's the tinfoil hat. If you can find a tinfoil hat, it will give you a uh, resistance bonus versus psychic effects. But it's. It's really a toss-up whether you want these or not. Now, psychically deaf is immune to all psychic effects, and that's something to really keep in mind. If you are, for example, using an insanity lance or a shock or an, just an insanity lance on a raider who is coming in and it doesn't work on them, it's probably because they're psychically deaf. Psychically deaf people are completely immune to, to insanity lances. Also, the enemy will never use insanity lances, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you were attacking somebody and trying to use an insanity lance on somebody, say uh, somebody is coming in and they are sappers and you're trying to take out their person who has the grenades because then they're going to dig into your base with an insanity lance and it doesn't work, chances are they might be psychically deaf. Um, the real thing that is affected by this is it's a multiplier effect depending on the psychic effect that is happening, such as a psychic pulse or a psychic soothe pulse, um, or uh, the little 
little dome things that you can get that also put out a psychic pulse temporarily. It multiplies the effect, whether negative or positive. So it's really a toss-up whether you want these or not. Also, psychically deaf people cannot sense where the ancient danger is, but all of these three can sense where the ancient danger is. Uh, that, that It doesn't really change anything there. Uh, it just depends on, like, where... Like, how long you want the person standing next to what you believe might be the ancient danger before you dig into it. But uh, they have a better chance of finding the ancient danger on your map. And there you go. I'm going to put the link to this very, very handy, or at least I hope it's handy, uh, uh, breakdown into the description down below. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful. If you have any uh, any advice any uh, discussion things, any any disagreements, any comments on this list, absolutely make sure to put it in the comments or join me on Discord and we can talk about it there. As for now, I'm Omni Rusted. Make sure to like and subscribe. That really helps me out. And I'll uh, I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.